Psalms chapter 68. And we got a wonderful psalm today. They're all wonderful. All right, I don't know what happened there, but I think you lost me. But we're still back on. Okay. Psalm 68. We welcome you to our family as we study the Bible every night and bring it forth to you. To the chief musician, a psalm or a song of David. So this is David. Let God arise. You can't see that one already. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Scripture is scripture, my friend. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word. And you can't go in the Bible and say, Look, I read my three chapters for the for the day. You gotta study. In Acts chapter 7. We have verse 56. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son, capital S, of man, standing on the right hand of God. That's Jesus Christ. Now, we don't have time to get into it, but if the nation of Israel would receive Stephen's preaching, you would have the second advent. Jesus was standing up. We're not going into the seven year tribulation period. Let God arise. And I guess the Jehovah Witnesses don't need to worry because Jesus is not God to them. But for me in the Bible, it says Jesus is God and God is Jesus. Let Jesus God arise. Second advent. Let his enemies be scattered. <laughs> Is that not Revelation 19? He goes forth with the word and the sword that comes out of his mouth. He is destroying the enemies of God, the enemies of Israel. Let them also that hate him flee before him. And they're they're going to flee, but they ain't going to go nowhere. You're, gonna, you're not going to hide from Jesus Christ when he comes back. And he's not coming back as that little baby. Coming back as a lion in the tri of, tribe of Judah. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. Non-existent. Eventually the smoke goes. It clears off. You don't see the smoke no more. Those enemies, you'll see the enemies, and eventually you won't see them no more. As wax melteth before the fire. Notice smoke and fire. Notice the reference. That's going to be the second advent. So let the wicked perish. To God love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in should not perish. You don't want to believe you're going to perish. At the presence of God, again, that's Jesus. But let the righteous be glad. Listen, those that are behind Jesus, the church of Jesus Christ, the bride of Jesus. Man, we're going to be shouting hallelujah, hooping, let's go. Jesus is winning. Jesus is going. And we're going to pick up those Jews in, in that place prepared by God, maybe set up Petra. But we're going to pick up those Jews and they're going to repent. They're going to get right. Here's the Messiah. Here's Jesus. Here's the Joshua Jehovah saved, bringing us across like Joshua did. Cross the Jordan into Jerusalem, setting up our people, setting up our nine, setting up Jerusalem, setting up the kingdom. Yeah, it's going to be great hula, great hallelujahs, great sin. And we've seen every single time music. Praising, wonderfulness. Let them rejoice before God. Again, Jesus. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Exceedingly. Man, it is going to be a celebration when Jesus Christ comes. For those Jews that are correct and right with God and those that are right. Not for the enemies. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Extol him. Lift him up. That rideth upon the heavens. There is a second advent. By his name. Jah. Jehovah. Capital letters. 
You know, capital S, when Jesus comes, he, he's got the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Rejoice before him. You know how it says, sing praises on the name. Sing praises on God. By his name, jaw. Let's look at Revelation 19. Because this is something interesting. What's it going to be like in the tribulation period? Horrible. You don't even want to live it. Jesus, unlike every time have ever been before. Revelation 19, verse 11. I saw the heaven open. Sound familiar? And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful, capital F, and True, capital T, in righteousness. Does that sound familiar? He does judge and make war. Sound familiar? His eyes are as a flame of fire. Sound familiar? And his head were many crowns. And he had a name... Written that no man knew but he himself. Jah. Jehovah. No one on the earth is going to know the name of Jesus. And the devil is doing quite well with that right now. We're working to that point. And he, and he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the word of God. No one knows it because they don't know the word of God. Look at verse 15, out of his mouth a sharp sword, <laughs> smiting and getting the enemies of God. A father to the fatherless. A judge to the widows. Now what's that about? In the tribulation period, and people make a big deal of it, but it ain't no big deal right now, but there's a thing called the mark of the beast. And you're not going to be able to buy or sell, the Bible says, without receiving that money. You're not going to sell anything, and you're not going to buy anything. You won't get no food, you won't get no help, you'll get no health care, you won't get nothing without that mark. So there'll be children who have been abandoned, there'll be children who don't have fathers, like today. Many children don't have a father today. I mean, the father, he doesn't know where he is. And widows... Even from the time of the Old Testament, in the in early days of the Old Testament, widows were, who cares about you? And they were taken advantage of. They were not given proper uh, account in the courts. And even the law said you were supposed to treat the widow. You're supposed to give her fairness, and yet they don't get it. And there'll be people in the tribulation period, their fathers and the widows, they're not going to get what they need or should get because of the bark. Because of what's going on. And nobody's going to care for them. So the fathers. The fathers don't care about the children. The widows. Well what about the ones that have children? They don't care about their mother. It's all for me. Me and myself. And we've already seen that with this coronavirus. I'm going to go run to the store and get all the toilet paper. I don't care about the elderly. I don't care about anybody else. But I got it all. We're seeing that period of time. People are not going to care. You know, everybody just loves everybody. That is full of baloney. Well, you know, I heard a news report. That this is good. Yeah, you heard the news because they did it just so they can get their name in, in the news. You know, this person gave, a, gave on the receipt a $1,000 tip. Yeah, and who called it in? Is God in his holy habitation? God is going to judge properly that widow, that, that child that has no father. Which they've been unrighteously. God said it, the solitary family. Solitary family. You're going to be families. You know what? what how are they going to survive? The Bible says that there is Jewish people that are going to rely on the help of the Gentiles. And the Gentiles are going to stand before God as a sheep nation. You visited me when I was in prison. You fed me when I was hungry. You took care of my wounds. They're going to be like, when do we do that, Lord? And they don't even know. And that whole tribulation period is not about the Gentiles when we're reading it. It's about the Jewish people. you got to stop thinking, oh, America and oh, England. No, it's about the Jewish people. It would be... Blasphemy for that Jew to receive that Antichrist in the most holy place and to receive his mark. 
That mark will probably have an image of a face or something. Listen, even the Jewish coins don't have pictures of the faces. The Roman coins did, and they had to exchange the coins from the Romans, Roman to the Israelites to go into the temple. True Jewish people will not worship an image of a head. Yet that, that Antichrist is going to get wounded in the head. He's going to come back to life, and they're going to make an image to him. And you're going to have to fall down and worship the image, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo, or go into the fire. That's coming back. He bringeth out those that are bound with chains. Like Jeremiah, locked up in prison before the Babylonians come. Peter is in jail one night, chained in the book of Acts. Many nights. But this is the one particular time I'm thinking of. Paul was in chains for the word of God. But the Jews will be chained, put in jail, slaughtered because they're Jews. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. No value, no nothing, no food, no water, no nothing, no life. That's hell. That rich man has said, oh, if I could just have a little drop of water that Lazarus can bring. Why don't you get some water where you are? There is none. All the wicked, all the evil against God, against the Son, against the Jew have been now cast off into hell that burns forever. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that'll be it. Oh, God. When thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, see, look, there's Jesus going through the way that Moses and Joshua went of the Old Testament. Joshua means Jehovah saved. Jesus means Jehovah saved. So Christ is going to come back. He's going to pick up those Jews. We say sell a Petra, but in a place that's prepared for God, prepared for them by God, Revelation 12. We're going to pick them up and we're going to carry them through. Christ and the church will carry those Jews through like Joshua and Moses did. The earth shook. You gotta realize the book of the book of Revelation speaks about there and when Christ comes, there's gonna be great earthquakes all over the place. And that final one earthquake is just gonna dislocate the entire features of the earth. And it said according to the Bible that, that the earth is going to change its surface and that the only high place on the earth will be Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be the only mountain. It says when Jesus comes down, the Mount of Olives is going to split in half. That's going to be a big earthquake. You think you people, oh, the times are now, the times are now. You, you better be thankful that if you're saved and you're raptured, you're not going to be going through the times are now when Jesus comes at the second advent. And the church won't go through it. The heavens also shall drop at the presence of God. Because here he comes through the sky. Look up in the air, it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's Jesus. Even Sinai. That's where the law was given by Moses through God. Moses went up to Sinai 40 days, 40 nights. Went back up 40 days and 40 nights for the, for the second giving of the law. You know, the originals were destroyed. Itself moved at the presence of God. It's a recap of what happened with Moses and Joshua. And it's going to happen again with Jesus. Man, when you read Exodus, it's not just, oh, historical. <laughs> oh, come on. It's future. You know, when we come back with the Lord Jesus Christ, and we start living out Exodus on it, we're going to be like, gee, this sounds awfully familiar. And so will for those Jews that are studying the scriptures. The God of Israel, and that's important. Because if your God's not the God of Israel, you don't have the God of the Bible. Better not be the God of Peter. That's not the one. I better not be God of the Pope, God of Pentecostal, God of Islam, the God of whatever. It better be the God of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Thou, O God, didn't send a plentiful rain. Now, we talked about this a few nights ago. In the tribulation period, the waters turned to blood. The rain has stopped. 
One third the oceans are, are made bitter by, by that wormwood. There's no drink. There's no rain. There's no wind. And when Jesus, I, I don't know personally, right around that Jesus comes back, maybe after he, as, as he's coming or after he comes, there's that first, I mean, there's that ladder in the first rain in one particular time. And there's two rainfalls in Jerusalem in that area. Is the latter rain, I'm saying the latter rain, the first rain. The latter rain, there's another rain. And that land has been deprived because Elijah's there like, hey, Lord, let it not rain. Remember that story? Remember that? It got so dried up that Elijah had to leave that brook and go hang out with the widow woman and her son. It's going to happen again. The Old Testament is going to happen again. Who's going to bring the water? Elijah? Nope, not this time. Jesus Christ. Maybe he tells us, no, Elijah, Elijah's raptured up. In the, he dies and he's raptured up. So maybe Jesus will bring that water. Whereby thou didst confirm thy inheritance, the land of Israel, when it was weary. What's the weariness? And he had no water. The Bible said one third of the earth is going to be burnt up. How are they burnt up? There's no water to put the fire out. That's the same time with Moses in, in Egypt. The water is churned to blood. They're trying to dig all around to find water. And don't go running to the grocery store because you go get your, your case of bottle of water. You're going to take and it's going to be blood. Or you're going to pop it over. Hey, clear a nice red. Oh, I'm bitter. Remember Israel? And they come out of the Red Sea. What was the next thing they met out of the Red Sea? We came to, a, to water. It was bitter. And what did Moses have to do? He had to take the tree and throw it in. Sound familiar? You better read and study your, all your Bible. Thy congregation has dwelt therein. Thou, O God, has prepared of thy goodness for the poor. All right, tribulation period. You got to receive that mark to buy or sell. There are only two classes of people in the tribulation period: the poor and the mark. There is no middle class in tribulation period. You got the mark. You're the class of the mark people. You're going to be rich or whatever. If you don't take that mark, you're poor. You have no money. You have no merchandise. You don't have nothing. So the poor that don't receive the mark and do get the blessings of God and Jesus, when Jesus comes back at the end of that seven years, the poor is going to be, hey, you held out. You didn't do it. You didn't get damned by that mark. The Jew can. Unless he wants to go against the teachings of the law. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Nelson. Schofield. All the printing presses of, that put out the word of God. There it is. Gutenberg. There it is. There is the Bible verse there that says the Bible is going to be published. And before this verse is even written, I mean, this verse is written, there was no publishing of books. There was no printing press. Everybody had to hand copy. That were the scribes' job. That's the prophecy right there. One day there'll be publishers publishing the Word of God. And now they're going sour and printing the, you know, the modern garbage Bibles. But the Philadelphia Church Age, the open door printed the Bible, got the Bible out. The Geneva Bible and the King James 1611 Bible. Kings of army did flee a place. Why are they fleeing? They, they're running to the holes, the Bible said. They're throwing their gods in the hole. Please, rocks, protect us from the sun that's coming. No, we don't want to face him because we're guilty of our sin. Get us away from the son of God. She that tarried at home divided the spoil. That's an interesting kind of thing there. Because that's the wife. The wife is reaping what the husband get.
the church, the body, not the building, the church and the nation of Israel are two brides. The bride of Jesus Christ is the church. The bride, of the, Israel is the bride of God. What spoil are we going to get? Everything that's left behind. When Israel came into the land, the land was flourishing. The houses were there. The wells were there. They've already dug the places for the water for the well. They've already set up farms. They already said, I think they said they came in. It was a time of harvest. When Israel and Jesus brings the church and Israel back into the land, it's all going to be established. Just move in. Ezekiel said, this is where this tribe goes. That's where that tribe goes. This is where that tribe goes. Go. And Joshua divided the land. And this time, Reuben, Gad, and half-tribe Manasseh will go on the proper side. That kings could be us. King of kings. Who's the king? Remember Revelation 1 the other day I showed you? We shall be called kings and priests. Though ye have lying among the pots, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. And that's just protection of God. And how wonderful God is. Silver and gold was the main construction of that tabernacle. Gold is the king. The royalty. The silver is the redemption. God paid for Israel to come out. By the blood of the Egyptians. Jesus Christ paid for our redemption by his blood on the cross. When the almighty scattered kings in it. It was white as snow in Salma. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow, the Bible says. The hill of God is as the hill of Bashan. The high hill as the hill of Bashan. Why leap ye, O ye hills? There's that weird prescription there again. Trees clapping their hands and the hills rejoicing. This is the hill which God desireth to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. Jerusalem. And it's a mountain. The chariots of God are 20,000. And even thousands of angels. There you go. How many angels are there? Thousands. Well, how many? Thousands. They're uncountable. And the Lord among them, as in Sinai, as in Sinai what? When the children of Israel came to Sinai, they got the law and they heard God speak. All of Israel was there. All of Israel is going to be in Jerusalem when God is there speaking to them. Not Moses. Moses, is, you know, he was there in, in uh, Exodus 20. Moses will be there in the, in the millennium, but guess who's going to stand between God and the nation of Israel? There's one meeting between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. In the holy place. That holy place was only for the priests. One king went in there, he got leprosy. John the Baptist's father is, is offering the incense of the prayers of the people and he sees his man in there. He didn't have wings, Gabriel. And he start, whoa, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. That ain't going to stop God from going in that holy place, the most holy place. Jesus Christ is the one that took that veil and ripped it in half. That's between the holy place and the most holy place. He's our great high priest. Never mind Aaron. Never mind Moses. Thou hast ascend on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts from man, for man. Yea, for the rebellious also. And the Lord God might dwell among them. Israel. That's the first advent. That's Ephesians 4, 8. Blessed be the Lord. 
who daily loadeth us with benefits. You want benefits? My job gives me benefits. God gives you better benefits. There it is. Don't seek your employer for benefits. Say, God, you know, I, 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 I'm not really, I don't think I'm making enough money here. And my bit, it's a small little business. He's not making a Lord, can you benefit me so my employer can get benefit and we can all be happy? How about that? Maybe your employer can be blessed by God by you asking God to bless him rather than going to your employer and asking for something that he may not be able to give you. Ask God for the benefits. And they always say, well, oh, this job benefit package. We have health care. God's great, the greatest health care. When we get to New Jerusalem, we will have no ill, no sickness, no pain, no more sorrow. That's the best health care. Even the God of our salvation. Now, who is the God of our salvation? What is the name of Jesus? Jehovah saves. Tell the Jehovah Witnesses, go away. Selah. Remember I told you about Selah. It's a musical rest or second advent passage nearby. He is our God. He that is our God is the God of our salvation. Wait a minute. Let's go over Luke. Let's see what let's see what Luke. Oh no, maybe it's Matthew. Maybe Matthew. Matthew one. Uh, Matthew one. Well, we'll look at Matthew then. Matthew chapter one, verse twenty three. Same context. Oh wait, twenty one. Matthew 1, 21. There it is. We've got two places to look at. And she shall bring forth a son. Now shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. You got it? Tell the Jehovah Witnesses to do a belly flop in the lake of fire. If they're not saved. And if they are saved, then tell them they're going to get wood, hair, stubble. Verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. And shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. God will save us and God is with us. Does that not sound familiar here? And unto God the Lord belong the issues, I think that's issues, marking my Bible, from death. Absent from the body present with the Lord. But God shall wound the head of his enemy, the Antichrist. You see why Israel can't get it? Remember we've just been reading about the second advent? Did we read about the second advent? And right in the middle of verse 18. That's not second, that's first advent. And then right in the middle of that, now we're talking about the Antichrist. <laughs> And they're going to say, well, they saw the cross. They don't can't even figure out this, the second advent when we're talking about the first advent. And then you throw the tribulation right after the. And they never saw the church age. Because the church age was there, but it was conditional based upon will Israel receive Jesus? No, they did not receive Jesus. All right, now we have the church age. The church age is only here because we're a stumbling stone to the, to the Jewish people. God said, fine, you don't want me? Those dead dogs? Yeah, those dead dogs. They'll receive me. And I'll send them to go preach to you. The head of his enemies and the hairy scalp. Now, that's an important word in the Bible, hair. If you ever want to study something in the Bible, study hair. Two men, they had... They, uh, they were told not to have their hair cut. Samuel and Samson. Absalom, who's a type of, of Antichrist, didn't, he only cut his hair once a year and had a whole, whole bunch of hair. And then he got his hair stuck in an oak tree. And there's a great debate with Jesus had long hair or he didn't have short hair. Then, you know, the Jewish people were to have a, hair, to have a beard so long. And then you go over to Corinthians, Paul's got to deal with them about air. 
of such an one as goeth on still in his trespass. Look at such a one. Another group, one. It says, God shall wound the head of his enemy, but such a one that goes on still in his trespasses. Enemies, but there's one. Who is one in class five or three? The devil or Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, the unholy trinity. And you'll find that in 2 Thessalonians. The Lord said, I will bring again from Bashan. I will bring my people, Israel, again to the depths of the sea. That my foot may be dipped in the blood of... We just read that, Revelation 19. Beyond a shadow of doubt what that is. That's Jesus. The blood of thy enemies and the tongue of thy dogs to the same. There's the second advent of Jesus. They have seen thy going. People are watching the Jews. Oh God. Even the goings of my God. My capital K king. Guess who that is? What did Pilate say? King of the Jews. What did it say? Goings of my God. My king. One and all. Again, throw the Jehovah Witnesses off in the lake of fire that burns forever if there's unsaved. How can you miss it? Oh, I guess. I guess you got to get a perverted Bible. Or you get a magazine that overrides the Bible. And I've been told by people who go have been in those things. They don't open the, they don't open their new world translate. They open up the, the that watchtower. And they discuss the watchtower. Foolish. In the sanctuary. That's the temple. That's Jesus Christ going in the temple in the millennium. The singers went before, the players on instruments followed after. Among them were damsels playing with cymbals. When Jesus Christ comes and gets those Jews, it's a parade. Why do you think they have musical bands at parades? The high school bands come out and pray. Because it comes out of the King James 1611 Bible. Did you know that? When Jesus goes ahead of us, and we go after Jesus, and the Jewish people come. Man, we're going to be given with great singing and great musical instruments. You don't believe me? All right. Joshua, Jehovah saves, right? Did they not march around a certain city blowing trumpets? Did they not go in and get a dancer with a red scarlet thread? And pulled her out before they destroyed the whole city? Rahab's coming again. And she was numbered with the children of Israel. And she helped the Jews, the spies. Sheep nation. Bless ye, make happy ye God in the congregations, plural. Even the Lord. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Waiting for the glorious spirit of our great God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed hope. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Bless ye God and the congregation, even the Lord. There's God and Jesus again. From the mountain of Israel. There is little Benjamin with their ruler. The princes of Judah and their council. The princes of Zebulun. The princes of Look at it. Israel is now being regathered by their tribes. Try to go find Benjamin today. Nephtali, thy God has commanded thy strength, Israel. Strengthen, O God, that which thou has wrought for us, Israel. Not us ain't the church. We're not here in Psalm 68. I find when you Psalm, they keep saying the church, the church. There's no church in Psalms. Because of thy temple at Jerusalem... Shall the kings bring presents unto thee? Millennium. 
The Bible says that the Gentiles are going to grab hold of the Jew. And they're going to say, come, bring us, to, bring us to your Savior. Bring us to the Messiah. Because we know God is with you. Emmanuel. Rebuke the company of spearmen. The multitude of bulls. With the calves of the people. To everyone submit himself with pieces of silver. Scatter thou the people that delight in war. There's no war in the millennium. That guy comes over the spearman, get out of here. We, we don't need you. They're going to burn the weapons of war, the Bible says. That bull, what's that bull? Haven't we read in the psalm that said, and the, about Jesus, the bulls surrounded me about? They're enemies of God. That calves, gee, I wonder what the calves are. Uh, Rehoboam, no, Jeroboam had two golden calves. That was the Catholic religion before Christ was even born. Aaron had a calf. Hindus have a calf. Egyptians have a calf. There's going to be no golden cows, no golden arches, no Burger King in the millennium. It's going to be Jesus Christ. How's that? A lot of people in Texas, they worship the cow. Some of them have the cow horns on their trucks and their car. You know what I mean? No one that worship. And you're not going to throw pieces of silver down to betray Jesus. How's that sound? Princes shall come out of Egypt. Gentiles. There is Egypt in the millennium. There they are. You see that? The nation that God said, don't you ever go back to them. The iron furnace. And in the millennium, God says the princes of Egypt, they're not going to come to Pharaoh. They're coming to Jesus. Ethiopia. That's another African name. Shall soon Stretch out her hands unto God. The first man in the Bible that is saved way a born-again Christian is saved today was an Ethiopian eunuch that had just left Jerusalem. Acts chapter 7. And the modern Bibles pervert that. Yeah, go ahead and be baptized and forget about, yeah, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. That part's removed out of modern Bibles. And yet, the first man to be saved like I am saved, an Ethiopian eunuch, the Bible says in, in the millennium, Egypt and, Ethio, uh, Ethium, Egypt and Ethiopia is going to come to worship Jesus. Try putting that one on your, TV, on your TV quiz show. What nation will be when Jesus reigns a thousand years? America? Yeah. Sing unto God. Oh, that's going to be great singing in the millennium. You know, we talked about the other day, make a joyful noise. Ye kingdoms of the earth, there will be kingdoms in the millennium. And guess who will be the kings over those kingdoms? Christians who have the right to reign. Whoa, there it is. Well done, now good and faithful servant. Uh, here's ten cities. There it is. There it is. The bride will take reigning over cities for Jesus, who will reign the reign of all reigns. Well, let me liken it to America. No, oh, I hate to do it, but Jesus Christ, King in Jerusalem, will be like the President of the United States. Well, what will we be as kings, governors of each state? And maybe mayors. And as the governors answer to one authority, the kings and the kingdoms are going to answer to one authority. Jesus Christ. You got Jesus Christ, you got the 12 apostles, and then you got those who got the right to the inheritance that Paul speaks about, those that are saved and serve the Lord correctly. They will be given a right with their talents. I hope I get at least one city. I lost my place. Oh, king of the city. Oh, sing praises unto the Lord. Say the. You're not going to sing praises to anything but Jesus. No contemporary music at this point. To him. Oh. To him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens. Have you read Revelation 19? That's Jesus and the church. Which were of old, the heavens of old, Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form, without void. And 
he does set out his voice and that mighty voice that sword that goes out of his mouth revelation 19 ascribe ye strength unto god his excellency is over israel and his strength is in the clouds again that clouds you got to study clouds the rapture is we shall meet in the clouds and there's going to be clouds when christ comes back he was taken up in the clouds in acts chapter one so as you see him go up so we will come back and it's kind of funny because at the end of the tribulation period it's darkness the sun is out the moon is out the stars are out there's no lights and yet here comes that one light from heaven and clouds and the bible speaks about bright clouds there was clouds on mount sinai oh god thou art terrible that means inspire terror out of the holy places plural where all the gods are that the people are going to be rejecting and going to throw to the mats and to the moles in the holes of the caves and the mountain get get, get those things away from them. here he come oh my oh get the oh, don't catch me with them you know unsaved man when jesus christ is going to have more fear of god then than the christian worrying about the lord is going to come with a cigarette in his mouth oh yeah i know god's coming but what are you doing with that beer can i believe in the rapture what are you doing committing adultery well, yeah, Jesus Christ is coming. You know, uh, even so come Lord Jesus. Why are you deceiving your church? The God of Israel. There it is. The God of Israel. Verse 8. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people Israel. Bless or make happy be God. There it is. There it is. 